making Mustangs sound better, one baffle at a time. All right, guys, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this or not, but... Hey guys, Stephanie and Justin from AmericanMuscle.com here kicking off a new season of Hot Lab with you. Now, we do have a lot of great content coming up in this episode. I finally got to start building my own personal car and I'm really excited to show you guys that. But first, we recently took a trip out to California to visit our friends at Flowmaster, put together an outlaw muffler. I didn't burn myself on the welder, so all is good. Check it out. Now, a few companies have really embodied the car culture and hot rodding culture like Flowmaster has over the last four decades. So we're here at Flowmaster in beautiful Sacramento, California, here with my buddy Alex Ortega, the VP of sales for Flowmaster. And Alex, I hear we have a fun day ahead of us, man. Absolutely, Justin. Today, you know, we're gonna see where the magic all happens and hopefully check out some cool new products that we've got in the, uh, in the works. That sounds really awesome, man. Well, fun day, let's get to it. What do you say? Let's do it. All right. All right, Alex, so obviously we're entering the production facilities here, man, it's loud. Can't wait to check everything out. But for the very few people that haven't really heard what Flowmaster is all about or heard about your systems, can you just tell those people what Flowmaster is all about? Absolutely, Justin. Flowmaster specializes in aftermarket performance exhaust products. Back in 1983, when Ray Pfluger first founded the company, he said, I need to find a solution for all the Northern California tracks that are presently being shut down due to excessive noise limits. And, and with that, caused and triggered is basically the development of a new and exciting muffler that nobody had seen before. Fast forward a few years, the 2015 and up Mustang, the Outlaw systems, uh, we can't keep them in stock, man. People are loving these things. And I'm excited to say that we might be able to see these Flowmaster Outlaw series systems come to life today. Absolutely. Let's, let's go see, check out the magic. It. Yeah, let's All do right. it. Man. All right. All right. All right, Alex, so I understand you're gonna hand me off, brother. That's right, Justin. We're over here, we're entering our production support area, and I'm gonna hand you off to uh, Brian Rathbolt. Brian, how you doing? Uh, Brian, good, nice to meet you. Our production manager here at Flowmaster, and he's gonna walk you through the whole process on how Flowmaster comes to life. Sounds good, man. I know we'll see you later, right? That's right, my man. Thanks, Alex. All right, Brian. Let's do it. All right, show where everything begins. Well, Brian, it looks like we have some automation or some robotics going on over here. What's this thing all about, man? Well, we took a robotic arm, and what it's doing is it's flaring all the inlets to the muffler tubes. And we do two and a quarter, two and a half, and three inch tubing. So the robot will pick up the tubing, put it into the flare press. It'll actually flare the product, and it photographs the product. From there, it'll tell if it's nominal size, if we have any cracks or fissures in our material. If it's bad, it'll reject it into the bin. If it's good, it goes into the good bin. How about that? That is pretty cool. You can see like a little x-ray right there. Exactly. And it refreshes every time you get a fresh flare. And he does have a name. We call him Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot. I heard that was very important for the young lady that works this machine. That's right. We don't want to mess that up. So we got to, uh, got to see some outlaws coming together right next door, right? Well, I'm going to take you to show you how they cut the cases down. It's a four inch case for the 817 542 kit. Cool. Let's Not do it. All right. This is where we're uh, cutting the tubing for the outlaw cases. Okay. It's a manual process, four inch tubing. Uh, we do this on this machine, other because it's such a large piece of tubing, four inch. From here, it'll go over to the robotics area. I'm gonna show you where they bend all the cases for every muffler in the plant. Four inch piece of tubing, so this is an outlaw case That's coming outlaw to life. Case. How about it? There you go, guys. That's how your outlaw starts out. And we'll show you how it gets a little further. Exactly. All right. Well, Brian, we're walking along here and it seems like we're coming up on our next step. This is where everything is gonna get wrapped, right? Right, this is the case area, parts department. It's where every muffler begins its life. We uh, do the embossing, the bending, and the tacking all in one area. Um, all these employees are trained in this area. We can rotate them through. This is the embossing machine right here. It lips Flowmaster into the product, goes to the bender, and then down to the automated case tacking area. Wow, that's pretty so, cool. So the bending is actually done uh, by a machine here, right? To wrap it around, correct. I guess. The employee will put it in, it has a backstop, it'll bend it, and then it'll go and get tack welded. Unless you have a really strong guy that's like right. yourself or myself, yeah, we can just bend those things all day. All day long. And then somebody's tacking it down on that end. Exactly. So at that point, then you're left with a, basically an empty shell. A shell. Right? What happens from there? From the shell, it goes into the robotics department, and they put all the baffles in, and they'll weld it up. Well, let's go check out some cool machines, man. We're gonna see some welding. This is, yeah, where, this is where sparks get made, right? Yep. Let's go do that. So we're here at the robotic cell. I'm gonna have you uh, operate a robotic cell making an outlaw primary. This is gonna go into that Mustang kit. Uh, Yang is gonna show you how to run it. 
We can turn it over to you. Gloves, yeah. All right, I'm official. Safety first. All right, absolutely. Safety first. We got our gl glasses on. We got our gloves. Time to start welding, right? That's what all it right. does. You'll install the baffles, and it'll go to a set welding perimeter, and then each part will stuff all the way up, and it'll okay. just follow your lead. That's really cool. All right, let's do it. So red button first. Yep. And then our green. Here we go. I'm officially a pro. <laughs> and so right now, the robotics is just going to take over, weld that baffle into place. Correct. It'll take over, tilts back, welds the set perimeter, set depth. Uh, at the end, you'll inspect your weld for quality. Okay. We'll inspect every part all the way up. Um, we also have QA at the end of the line and inspect everything also. So the first step is done. Correct. Now I'll grab another one and just yep. keep on trucking, huh? Let's do it. Making muff Mustangs sound better, one baffle at a time. Hit the green button again. Now while this guy's going, I think it's an interesting thing to point out too, is that you guys don't use like any internal packing per se, right? With Blowmaster mufflers, no. it's all just metal baffling. It's all baffles. Uh, each one, each product family is designed with a different sound. So I'm gonna check my welds here. Yeah, it looks about as good as my welds at home. Green button. So from here, at this point, it's got to get capped, correct? Correct. So why don't we uh, hand over production here to Yang. We'll, we'll let him keep trucking along, and maybe we'll go check out some caps. We will. We'll go right. rolling and see him cap in. Let's do it. So welcome to welding. This is the welding department. Uh, what they're going to do is install the end cap to that outlaw body, and he's going to tack weld them. From there, they'll go over to the finished welder. He'll finish weld the body of the muffler. From there, we'll go and get a pipe, hanger, and all the tips put on. Pipe, hanger, and then paint, and Correct. then we're rocking and rolling. We're rocking and rolling, ready all to the right, customer. Man. Chris behind us is going to do the assembly. All right. So this is what I like to watch. This is the finished working. part. All right. So obviously, we have a lot of robotics going on here at Flowmaster, but you can't replace good old-fashioned human human labor, right? Yeah, they can't get into the angle teaching and weld. Uh, they can also control the flow. Any gaps. This is the final stage of the painting process for the mufflers. It says paint packaging department. Uh, behind you, you've got heat tunnels, paint booth, and the operators are painting 40 series mufflers right now. Unfortunately, the outlaw is still being welded. Okay. So when they're done, they'll come over here and get the finished process. This is a heat tunnel that runs on natural gas, just like your house. Okay. Uh, Pretty cool. It's like a roller coaster. It's like huh? a giant roller coaster inside. The muffers get preheated to a determined temperature of 98 degrees. Once they come back out, they'll get painted, the paint dries, and then they go right into the boxing and the labeling process. Let's go check out the final stage. Fantastic. All right. Well, Brian, we're built, we're painted, we're in the final stage of production here, which is your packaging, correct? Right. That's ready to go. Axle back kit comes with all the hardware, the instructions. They'll put it on your vehicle, make it sound awesome. In order to sound awesome, we have to hear these things. Alex just so happens to have a set installed on his 2015 GT outside. So I think it's time to go hear some sweet, sweet music of the Outlaws. Can't thank you enough. Brian, thanks Anytime. so much for the tour. Had a Welcome. blast. Thanks for letting me stuff a few of these things now. Let's get outside and maybe have a beer later, huh? Sounds good. All right. Well, the Outlaw is a definitely a screamer, man. Five out of five on the Wake the Neighbor scale every time. Appreciate the tour, it was a lot of fun, but I know we're not quite done. One more thing you have to show us, something new and exciting for the brand, right? Absolutely, Justin. Let's go check it out, man. All You're right. gonna dig it. All right, Justin, so I'm gonna take you to go see uh, something very special, one of our new developments for 2017. And I've got one of my head engineers here working on it as, at the moment. His name's Alex, coincidentally. Nice. Alex, how you doing today, buddy? I'm good, how about you? How are you? All right, so talk to me a little bit more about what you guys are working on here and what is this thing called? So right here we have the Flowmaster Delta Boost Performance Tuner. It simply plugs into your boost pressure sensor and it will turn up your boost between 3 and 4 PSI depending on your desire. As Very well as cool. we have a minus 4 PSI uh, valet mode if you give it to your kids or valet. Uh, but how does it account for it like fuel wise? Because I know a lot of times with the old school stuff, if you add boost, a lot of times you got to add more fuel. Is that the case with this? Exactly. So the factory computer will uh, turn up fuel pressure as well as maintain proper mixtures so you'll have a proper running car. 
and prevent yourself from you know blowing your car up. Yeah, exactly. right. All right, good deal. So does this act like a tuner itself? Do you plug it in OBD2? Uh, it actually plugs in right to the uh, boost pressure sensor right next to the intercooler on the uh, EcoBoost Mustang. Plug and play, man. Plug and play. In addition to that, is there like a knob you got to use or something like that? How does it all work? So what we have is a smartphone app, Bluetooth. You can download on the Apple Store or the Google Android Store. Um, basically, you'll have four settings. You can turn between valet mode, standard mode, plus three PSI and four PSI mode. I understand you might even have a car on the dyno so we can see this thing in action. Is that the case? Absolutely, Justin. We actually have an EcoBoost Mustang in-house, so I want to check out the numbers myself as well. Let's do it. Again, you don't have to go too crazy, right? I mean, it just simply plugs into the uh, boost solenoid with the Mustang. Exactly. So it just plugs into the boost pressure sensor next to the intercooler. The easiest way to access it, access it is through the uh, driver's side front wheel arch. Okay. So what you do is just undo the five clips, pull back the splash guard, and simply reach your hand in there and you can uh, quickly install it. That's awesome, man. You don't even really need a lift for this thing, it looks exactly. like. Exactly. Huh? Temperature is right around 50 degrees out here in Western California and uh, with a few more pounds of boost with the Delta module installed, let's see if we can increase those numbers. Well, Alex, looks like we just got done making a few pulls here with the Delta Boost installed. Again, baseline numbers with this thing, Auto EcoBoost, 256 horsepower, about 316 pound-feet of torque. Uh, what are we looking at now with the module installed? So with the uh, four pounds of boost setting that we have, we uh, peaked out at 272 horsepower. It's a gain of 16 as well as 366 foot-pounds of torque, which is a gain of nearly 50 foot-pounds of torque. Big peak gains, of course, but that only tells uh, part of the story here. The curve gains usually with these EcoBoost-powered cars is pretty astonishing. Uh, same thing goes here with the Delta Boost, correct? Correct, so from approximately 2,000 RPMs onward, you have a gain of anywhere from 20 horsepower to a peak horsepower gain uh, of 39 horsepower at 3,600 RPM. Yeah, man, all this real estate underneath the two numbers here, the two lines, that's what you wanna see because you know the car is making big power uh, than it did over the baseline numbers. Well, very cool. And a big question I think a lot of times people have with something like this is, can I stack it or combine it uh, with a canned or custom tune? So uh, this Flowmaster uh, Performance Delta tuner is uh, fully stackable with anybody else's product. You can turn up their boost, three more, four more pounds of boost, whatever you want or dumb it down if you want to give it to the valet exactly. or, the, or, the, or the son or daughter for the weekend, right? Exactly. There you go, I think that's awesome. Well again, Alex, I can't thank you enough, man. It was an awesome tour at Absolutely. Flowmaster. Thank Fun you. day here, thanks for making us feel like family and for showing us around the joint. Right on, Justin. Appreciate it, and if you guys want to check out more Flowmaster goodies, you can right here at AmericanMuscle.com. Hey guys, so this episode's product break features Raxium's Vector taillights for 05 to 09 Mustangs. Now you guys do have a couple different choices and styles because these come either smoked or non-smoked with both white and red diffusers. If you guys are interested, you can always head over to the site and check them out more for yourselves. But there is a little something that I want to show you guys first that I've been working on recently. Here in the shop today with my own personal 2017 GT. Now for those of you guys that don't know, I got this car back in July and I told you I was gonna build it and I told you I was gonna make it a bad bitch. I'm gonna make this car a bad bitch. Now as this car sits right now, it is the furthest thing from what I consider a bad bitch. It's actually still completely stock. But I do have a whole big build plan for this car. I have a lot that's gonna go into it. Obviously, I'm gonna be doing a lot of suspension and handling improvements and upgrades, some drivetrain improvements as well. There's a lot of appearance stuff that's gonna happen to this car, and I have to do a lot of power mods if I wanna live up and back up that name that I've given this car already. And you guys can be sure that I'm definitely gonna do that. Either way, today what we're going to be tackling is some of the suspension upgrades that I just mentioned and we're also finally getting rid of that stock exhaust which I'm so stoked about because I'm pretty tired of this car being as quiet as it is. Either way, there's a lot that we have planned for this car, a lot that I have planned for this car. It's not going to happen all at one time so you guys keep your eyes open over the next few episodes but in the meantime, let's get started on what we have here today. So jumping right into this, some of the things I'm most excited about with the car here today are actually underneath the car. So I like this car a lot, but I knew that I had to get rid of the stock exhaust. I knew I was looking at getting an aftermarket cap back. Now, while we had the exhaust dropped and we had some other parts out of the way, I figured why not throw a DSS carbon fiber one piece drive shaft on the car while we're at it. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't necessarily need this drive shaft right now, but I will need it later on. So in the meantime, I get to enjoy a sick one piece drive shaft. Getting back to the cat back though, this is a Cook's cat back with an X-pipe and I wanted this cat back because I think it produces one of the best sounds for an S550. I've heard hundreds of aftermarket exhausts on S550s lately, but I have to tell you this one is a little bit different because it is my own personal car. Take a listen guys and hear how it sounds. So another 
big thing we're doing here today is I'm actually getting rid of the stock shifter and we're currently installing the Barton Hybrid 3 shifter. Pretty stoked about this. This thing's actually really badass. There are actually two different ways you can mount the shifter. You can mount directly to the body or you can mount directly to the trans. I want this mounted directly to the trans so that when the transmission moves, my shifter and everything stays together as one piece. I think it's going to make a big difference and I can't wait to test it out. So the guys just finished up installing my new Barton shifter and they topped it off with a GT350 shift knob and I have to say it looks great in the car and the shifter feels great. I can't wait to drive this thing. But before I do, there's still a couple other things that I want to show you guys outside the car. So there is one more thing that I wanted to do to this car here today guys and that's the suspension. And I can tell you right now that originally I'd planned on doing a full coilover setup on this car but a couple months back we did a build on a customer's car where we added airlift suspension. The second I drove that car, I knew that's what I had to do to mine. I need this. I need this. I need Air Ride. So here it is installed on my own personal car. This is Airlift's digital V2 kit, which means that everything's digitally controlled. It's a really nice kit, guys, and it's going to do a lot for me in terms of both handling performance and in the looks and styling categories as well. So I do have a dual compressor setup run on this car, but that's because there is a big five gallon storage tank back there, and the dual compressor is just going to fill that up so much faster and easier than a single compressor would. And while we were in there in the suspension, I wanted to add some vertical links to the rear and some adjustable rear toe links as well. And to finish everything off, we added White Line's front and rear adjustable sway bars. All right, so I'm finishing up the install of my rear sway bar here with a White Line adjustable end link. And I'll tell you guys right now, these end links are installed the opposite way because Airlift recommends it. They recommend it so you won't have any clearance issues with your bag or your top mount when you're aired out. So I couldn't really bag the car without a set of wheels, so I picked up a set of Raystar's Dark Star wheels and wrapped them in Mickey Thompson tires. Now that everything's installed, we can actually get to the fun part and take this thing out on the street. The first thing that I noticed right away is actually the shifter. I loved the shifter the second I took it out of the box and saw it on the table. I couldn't wait to get this thing installed. I was super stoked on it. And I can tell you right now that it's a night and day difference. It's extremely tight, but it's not tight in a bad or a binding way. It does have the 25% reduction in throw, but it feels a lot shorter. So 25% doesn't really sound like a lot, but it makes for a huge difference in the driving experience. And I like it. I think it's perfect because it, it doesn't make the shifter notchy. It's smooth and accurate. And to be honest with you, I feel like at this point in time, I feel like I couldn't miss a gear with this car. Now I do have it mounted to the trans, it's not mounted to the body at all. So there are some things that I'm noticing like a little bit more vibration in the handle and if I'm lugging the car around in the low RPMs, like say I don't want to downshift or something, there is a lot more noise, but I knew that that was going to happen and it's not something that bothers me at all. Yeah, I haven't really beaten on this car, I haven't done any red line shifts or anything yet. I'm still getting used to everything at this point, but I am very interested to see how it's going to act when I have a lot more power and torque. Right now, with everything the way it is, with my stock setup, I couldn't be happier with this shifter. The second thing is my exhaust. I was really excited to get a cat back on this car because I couldn't take the stock exhaust anymore. I'd be out cruising with my buddies and I can hear their cars over mine and that bothers me. So I finally got the cat back on this car and my first impression of the cat back is inside the car, it's awesome. I love it. It's quiet. I mean, you can hear it. But there's no drone, none at all. And I have an X-pipe on this car, but the note isn't too raspy. I feel like it's a perfect balance between being loud enough and raspy. It sounds mean, but it's not overbearing. It's not too loud. I don't think it's going to get me in trouble. It's quiet when I want it to be. If I'm passing a cop, I can just throw in a higher gear. I can just cruise right by, but it sounds great when I open it up. The exhaust note paired with the shifter just makes me want to grab gears all day long. After that, the airlift suspension. Now, I told you guys I did drive a customer car with the airlift installed and I knew right then and there that I had to put it on my car. There was no other option. And I put the airlift on it for things other than just styling and looking cool and be able to dump the car. I wanted performance both in the straight line and on the street. I haven't really thrown it into any 
turns or anything like that, but I can feel the difference in the sway bars. I can feel the difference already with the vertical links and the adjustable toe links in the rear. And I know that this car is actually gonna handle. Nothing beats the ride quality of a car on bags. It rides like a dream. I thought it rode good from stock and was comfortable from stock, but I feel like if I didn't tell anybody that this car was bagged and someone didn't know better and they got in the car, they wouldn't even notice. They'd feel like it's a stock car, and I love that. In what other world can you get the performance of the airlift suspension while doing other suspension components that are tightening things up and giving you more NVH, but still maintaining such a good ride quality that's actually better than stock? In what world? You, you can't. I have the V2 kit, so it's all digitally controlled through the V2 controller that I have tucked in over here on the side. And there's that noise. Did you guys hear it? You get a little bit of that noise, but it doesn't bother me at all. I wanted to see if you guys could actually hear it. I don't know if you can or not. The controller has room for eight presets. I have a couple presets set, but my thing is I like manual because I'm familiar with this kit. I know how I want my car to look. I kind of want to experiment with it a little bit because it is my car. And as I'm driving around, I can change things. Preset mode is pretty cool though, and you can literally have your car, you can be parked, aired out with your car off. You turn your car on, it will automatically air up to your driving preset. It's just awesome to have such a versatile system. So when I bagged the car, I knew that the big decision was actually going to be the wheels. And what was I gonna do with the wheels? I did decide to do two different setups. I have a drag setup and then I have a street setup, but I'm still keeping the rear wheels the same no matter what setup I'm going with. So I got a little bubble Mickey Thompson on the back and I'll just do a wider set of the race stars in the front for daily driving. There's just something about a car on bags with a bubble out back. <laughs> on a set of dark stars that looks good. I'm a really picky person when it comes to mods and when it comes to building my own cars. And all of these parts are fully functional. There's nothing on here that's on here just to look good. All right guys, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this or not, but I don't really have many pictures of my car. I'm literally gonna stop right now. I'm gonna air this thing out. I'm gonna take a picture real quick. Laid out. Well, new year means new Mustang news, and as you might imagine, it all revolves around the 2018 Mustang and the 2018 GT350. Now, in the last installment of Mustang news, we told you about some of the early rumors that we heard about, including the refresh for both the front and rear end, along with that 10-speed automatic transmission, but we have learned a lot since then. First up, it seems like the V6 may be finally making its exit from the Mustang here, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Now, this news does come to us from our friends over at Mustang6G.com who have learned that the body type or body code for the 2018 V6 Mustang keeps coming up as invalid or unavailable in Ford's system, whereas the body type or body code for the GT and EcoBoost both show as available. Now, this is kind of no surprise really with the Ford EcoBoost platform kind of taking over or poised to take over for the more affordable engine option in the Mustang. But nevertheless, a quick moment of silence for all my 3.7 owners out there. All right, on to happier news here with the 2018 Mustang and something that's everyone's favorite topic, exhaust. Now, in the last installment of Mustang News, we told you about this standard S550 GT running around Dearborn with a quad tip exhaust system. Well, the rumors I'm hearing about point to that being an option on the next generation S550 GT, and it will be an active exhaust system, giving the driver the ability to control the volume and the tone of the exhaust, much like the GT350, which is very cool. Another part that might be trickling down from the GT350 is the very awesome and very capable Magna Ride suspension, and of course those dampers to both the GT and maybe even the EcoBoost platform. Now, no word on whether or not this will be a performance pack or a different option entirely, but this is news that should excite everyone because as someone who has driven an R with the suspension, I can tell you it's gonna be a fantastic addition to the next generation S550. 
Speaking of that GT350, will it be around for 2018 or will it be extinct much like the beloved color Grabber Blue? Well, yes, Grabber Blue is going away for 2018, but no, the GT350 is not. It will be back for 2018, according to some leaked photos from the Ford dealer screens, showing that the enrollment plan for dealers is now open for the 2018 model year Shelby GT350. Great news for prospective buyers out there who might not have been able to get their hands on one. Maybe bad news for current GT350 owners out there who are hoping for more of a limited run just for value's sake. Looking closely at that dealer announcement, it showed that the GT350 will be back for 2018, but with no exterior changes, minus a few color additions, including Leadfoot Gray and Orange Fury, two interesting new colors, and the return of Kona Blue for the first time in a little while. This should be a welcome addition to a lot of Mustang fans out there and of course we already told you grabber blue is making its exit here for 2018 that color only ran for one year in 2017. so wait if the 2018 gt350 isn't receiving any exterior changes what about the 2018 is it still going to get that refresh well, if I'm a betting man, and I am, I'm still gonna bet yes, because I think Ford is gonna do something similar to the 11 to 12 to 13 and 14 Mustangs where they made it resemble more of the GT500. I'm thinking in 2018, Ford might do something similar, make the standard EcoBoost and GT resemble more of the GT350, at least I hope, because I think that would be awesome, or I might just be completely wrong and the 2018 Mustang will look nothing like the Shelby GT350. Either way, time will tell on this rumor. Either way, one good thing to hopefully come from another year of the GT350 is that maybe dealers will ease up on some of these ridiculous markups, seeing as though the car won't be as rare as previously thought. Time will tell there. But either way, guys, we cannot wait to see the next generation of the S550 Mustang, so keep it locked to our blog at AmericanMuscle.com or here at Hot Lap for future updates. That's going to do it for this episode of Hot Lap. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the first few mods of my build. I know I definitely enjoy my car now. But keep your eyes peeled because I am far from being done. I still have a lot more to do to that car. So if you want to keep up on my build, just make sure you keep watching episodes of Hot Lap. We also hope you enjoyed the tour of Flowmaster. We had a great time there. Thanks to the guys for showing us around, giving us a tour of the joint. We got more vendor tours coming your way for 2017. Going to be a good year here for sure for us. So for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.